Speaking of the, while we're on the subject of Ozzy anyway, mm -hmm. I've always wanted to know this, and now that I have you sitting here, i got to ask it. You were part of a lineup that included Jerry Cantrell on guitar. Mm -hmm. This lineup did not do anything but that one album. Whatever happened to that lineup, like why didn't it materialize into something further? Well, it was an in-between in phase for Ozzy. He wasn't with Zach, from what I understand. This is None of this is really my business. I was honored to just get in there and be called for the gig. Um, Leslie West was on that record, and funny enough, Richie Scarlett was in Mountain. Mm -hmm. um, there were several guitar players on that album. Uh, and I got asked back, and there was different guitar players throughout. Uh, and I got back, asked back to do four, five, six more, maybe, maybe six more, and we added it to the uh, Prince of Darkness release, which was a four CD box set to become Undercover, which was its own release. So. Uh, Mike Borden and I are the consistent rhythm section on that record throughout the whole record and it was guests you know okay. so there really wasn't a lineup except for Mike Borden and I and guests okay yeah in the lineup was presented as one lineup though so that's that's why that I was kind of the that. original format but if you look into it there's other okay. kinds of like Leslie West is a cool one on uh, Mississippi Queen. I mean, let's face it, you get the man himself. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, and here I am with the bass player, even though Richie's a well known guitar player, he was the bass player for Mountain. So, and they played Steinbergers, which is so great. <laughs> I mean, this is my travel bass right here, so I can always be, you know, well warmed up and everything. I'm not sure uh, Ace or Ian and Billy want to see that on stage, but I love that bass for <laughs> practice. <laughs> it reminds me of the outfield from the 80s, you know. Oh man, I, I think it's cool. I mean, that's a minimalist dream right there. Yeah. I mean, I also play uh, upright electric. That's what I do a lot in metal. Right. And um, you know, when I'm playing with the bow and all that, it's an amazing thing to run like effects on that and keep up with the guitar player's volume. Right. You know. Well, let's take it back to Ace for a second here. So uh, he has a new album out, Space Invader. Yeah. And when you have someone as legendary as Ace, as he definitely is, uh, what can you tell me about tell me about his creative process and how free are you to contribute ideas? Does he write all the songs? You write your parts, that kind of thing. Um, you know, when I first went in the studio, I didn't know what to expect. Although we had kind of a cool vibe right out of the gate, Ace and I. We did a behind the player DVD. Mm -hmm. Um, it kind of was Ace's DVD about being up close and personal with him. And at the end of the day, uh, we kind of knew we were going to work together again. It was kind of like something happened. It wasn't just like, I'm a KISS fan and I love Ace. There was like, there was a real professional and genuine personal chemistry. And um, he said it too. He's like, I had a feeling we were going to get back together and work together. And I said, I did too. I just didn't know when. It was hard to predict with all the scheduling. Uh, so that vibe transferred into the studio, and he had songs, and but he wasn't rigid. It wasn't like it has to be like how I've heard it. He was open. So uh, the instrumental Starship, I played bass on, and that was great because that's a special thing. Every record has an instrumental. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like Eddie, an Eddie Van Halen type of concept, you know. Or right. His musicality, mystical musicality thing is going to be in an instrumental, so it was great to make it on that one, and I kind of came up with the, uh, yeah, I came up with some bass stuff that wasn't there, some of the patterns, like I think the descending bit, and he had the kind of moving uh, Beatles-y bit, but I modified it a tad, so he was really cool like that, he was like, oh yeah, let's do that, and when I came up with something, he wasn't weary, so again, he's focused, and he's open, so I, I did come up with some stuff. And uh, just last week I was playing something in Soundcheck and he was like, hey, that's really cool. Maybe we should make that the new instrumental for the next record. So he, you know, I, I, there's nothing in stone yet, but he, that's the type he is. That's cool. Where, you know, if there's something cool, he doesn't seem too politically caught up. It's, if something's great, he wants to work on it. Cool. Yeah, and that, I love that about him. It's not, you know, he's very comfortable with himself. Yeah. He's ace. There's a lot to love he's about He's ace. Him. What are you going to do? You know, he's ace really. You know, exactly. He's, he's pretty comfortable with himself. He doesn't need to prove anything. Right. Really. You know. Now, given your Kiss fandom, now when it comes time to choosing the live songs for the live show, do you ever just nerd out and go, oh, I want to play this song that, you know, he wouldn't normally include in the set? I, I put my two cents in a little bit, but it was so well covered already. Yeah. I mean, there's some real obvious ones. What's cool is we were doing Detroit Rock City, which I, I didn't 
I wasn't sure he was going to do that song, and people lose it on that, of course. Shock Me goes over great. Um, King of the Nighttime World's a lot of fun. But don't ruin the set list for me too much now. <laughs> well, some of it's online. I mean, <laughs> just because I say something doesn't mean we're going to do it either. Yeah. It could change. I mean, we've put in and taken out things, and it could change. So right. I like uh, being surprised. Is what yeah, I mean. one thing is I do a bass solo every night, and I do it different every night. I hear you actually get a, a, a lead vocal time, too. Yeah, right? yeah, I've been singing Strange Ways, uh, which is quite good for me in the sense of it uh, fits my range and all that. And, uh, you know, you kind of find your song. I can't sing like Peter Chris. I mean, the guy <laughs> sounds like Peter Chris, but it, it suited me pretty well, and my personality comes out. So I sing all night, I think, in almost every song. But um, that's my lead or feature, yeah. Cool. And to have a bass solo, I mean, I'm not even sure who does a bass solo these days. I know there's a blood solo by a very popular bassist out there, which uh, it's a bass blood solo. But <laughs> I, I don't do any blood or uh, fire. I just actually put the fire on the strings. You know. So to speak, there you yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> you just wake up and just thank God you're Chris Wise. <laughs> ah, <laughs> that's well, like a pretty great. I life. don't know if I'd <laughs> say my own name, but I'm grateful for my life. You know. Yeah. Uh, um, I am. I, I, I wake up sometimes. I go. I can't believe I'm still alive. I've been through so much stuff. Um, I've been in a bus accident with the cult in Croatia a couple of years ago. I had dreams about it. I, I have. I'm fairly psychic. That and I've guided my whole career with my intuition, not a business card, mm -hmm. and placed myself where I needed to be. And people always go, "How did this happen?" And I really believe it's my intuition. Um, I, had, I had reoccurring dreams about the bus crash in Croatia, I was looking out the window, and I said, this is the dream, oh my god, it was a double-decker, I said, I better get to my bunk, and about five minutes later, we got in a bus crash, Wow! and the bunk saved everybody, Ian was in the front, uh, crow's nest, what they call in the front of the bus, right. kind of a tube, he was reading, he, he often, he's, Ian and I are always the last guys awake, and uh, he was up, he got thrown down, a little bruised, I got banged and my hand got a little bruised, but if you were downstairs in the kitchen area, it could have thrown you through the window. If you smashed your head in the marble corner, you could have died. I mean, the whole huge, the size of a refrigerator chunk was taken out of the bus. The whole side was scraped. We had three flat tires. I had a little mini window, and I couldn't help but think of Cliff Burton. Exactly. Cliff Burton, rather. And, uh, you know, I thought, my God, what a horrific thing to go through. We were so lucky, just a couple little bruises on my hand. But I'm alive because I had the intuition. I know it. If I was downstairs, didn't have any clue about it, that could have thrown you across the, 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 the bus and could have killed you easy. Right. And uh, anyway, the guy fell asleep and I had a feeling about him. I thought something was wrong. And he fell asleep, and that's what threw him on. So touring and traveling and uh, my years of partying and all that are a little more behind me. I've grown up quite a bit. Yeah. But you wouldn't survive. You just wouldn't survive partying every night, making your whole life. I've, I've, making it, I've, I've made it all about my career, and I use my gut. So if I were to leave you with anything really important, things you can't see from OWL is based on trusting your gut and trusting your intuition. And it's not magic hocus pocus. Everyone knows what I'm talking about when I say this. Yeah. And that gut, for me, my intuition is very developed. That gut saved my life and also guided my career. So um, put down the cell phone, put down the iPad, and use your wits. Pay attention. Yeah. Well, that would be a good place to stop, but I do have one more question. Okay. All right. And no problem. Past collaborations excluded. So no Ace, no Ozzy, no nothing. Mm -hmm. Who is your dream collaborator? Like, who have you not worked with yet that you really want to? Uh, I think Dave Grohl comes to the top of that list. Uh, you know, Ian was in the doors, and I was always maybe hoping to do a little co collaboration with uh, Ray Manzarek, and I, I regret I never really got to meet him. Mm -hmm. When I go back to L.A., I have a all-star jam with uh, Robbie Krieger, and I'm going to be doing some upright bass, which is really exciting. So I'm really glad I'm getting to do that, because I always I always felt I was going to work with Ray. So I would say Ray, uh, even though he's passed, um, I would also say Dave Grohl. And if I were to put a band together with it of exactly who I wanted, I'd go like Zach Wild, Dave Grohl, and myself. And we would just probably slaughter house. I'm not, you know, I love Zach Wild. 
and you know things like that. That that's a realm that that would be very exciting. You know, and Dave Grohl is like one of the best drummers out there, so yeah. that would be exciting. And I don't even know if Dave Grohl knows what I do. I, I, I'm not even sure he does. So for example, he might hear a cult bass player, but right. totally unaware that I'm like a progressive, upright, <laughs> avant-garde. So I don't know, maybe something like that in the future. We'll see what happens. But that, I picked Dave Grohl, he's one of my favorite drummers. I would definitely check it out. Mm -hmm. And also check out Ace Fairly's Bass Invader. It's out now, uh, I don't know the label, I'm sorry. E1 is uh, e Ace's label, and yeah. uh, went to number nine. Uh, most uh, pre-ordered record on uh, Amazon, it was high up at Billboard. So uh, that was a first for Ace, which surprised me too. He was like, that's a first for me, and I was like, <laughs> nice. wow. So I'm very grateful to be here, and um, with so much more coming. And, uh, New cult next year. Yeah. Owl is when? Uh, it's going to be early, uh, early quarter 2015. It's all done. Video's done. I've mixed it, mastered it. It's done. It's in the can. Things you can't see. Things you can't see. And remember my story. Trust your intuition. All right. On that, we'll see you tonight at the Ace Freely Show at Trees. Thank you, Chris, very much. You're welcome. Appreciate nice it. to see you. You too. Yeah.